Ozone is the Earth's natural sunscreen. It screens ultraviolet radiation. If there's less ozone, more UV radiation gets to the Earth. If there's more ozone, less UV radiation gets to the Earth's surface. There are a few ingredients to the Antarctic ozone hole. The first ingredient is you have to have um, very high levels of chlorine and bromine. In fact, if you made a measurement now, you'd find that about 80% of the chlorine over Antarctica is from human-produced compounds, chlorofluorocarbons, and halons. The second ingredient is you have to have very cold temperatures. Over Antarctica, about 10 miles up or so, it gets extremely cold. And in those cold conditions, you form fairly exotic clouds, uh, what we call polar stratosphere clouds. And you will release this chlorine down there into a form that can destroy ozone. The third ingredient is you need a little bit of sunlight. The sunlight appears over Antarctica in August, September, and just that little bit of light provides the energy to drive what's called the catalytic reaction, in which one chlorine molecule can destroy thousands and thousands of ozone molecules until finally 100% of the ozone in that layer from 50,000 to 80,000 is destroyed. There is a question of how will climate change affect the Antarctic ozone hole? And in fact, uh, there's some questions about whether as it gets colder, you can make the ozone hole last longer. We don't have a good answer for that right now. Um, so we don't actually know what's gonna happen. And so that's a real hot research topic. Our current predictions right now is that the ozone hole will be back to a level we saw in 1980 in the year of about 2070. For about the next 10 years or so, we'll see very large ozone holes. And then after about 2017, 2018 in there, they'll start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And by 2070, should be back to a 1980 level.